to hear your voice. I want to hear your voice. Nothing else really matters but your choice. I want to live unhindered my life. Surrendered. I want to hear. I want to hear your voice. I want to hear your voice. I want to hear your voice. Nothing else really matters but your choice. I want to live unhindered. My life surrendered. I want to hear. I want to hear your voice. I want to hear your voice. I love sitting at your feet. I love hearing every word you say. I love knowing all your desires. I'm so pleasure to obey. Your favor's like a sunrise driving all my nights away. I love sitting at your feet, Holy Spirit. I love sitting at your feet, Holy Spirit. I love sitting at your feet every single day. I love sitting at your feet every single day. Every time you talk to me, I feel good. Every time you talk to me, I feel the glory of God. Every time you talk to me, my whole world changes every time. I hear your voice. Every time you talk to me, my world changes. Every time you talk to me, my whole world turns around. Don't quit talking to me. Don't quit talking to me. When you speak to me, my whole world turns around. Don't quit talking to me. Don't quit talking to me. I need your voice. I need your love. My whole world turns around. Don't quit talking to me. Don't quit talking to me. My whole world turns around. Don't quit talking to me.
don't quit talking to me. Never, 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 never get talk. Never quit talking to me. Don't quit talking to me. I need your voice. I need your voice. I need your voice. I need your voice. Don't quit talking to me. Don't quit talking to me. Holy Spirit. Never, 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 never quit talking to me. Never, never, Holy Spirit, never, never quit talking to me. I need your voice. And God talks to us through people, through our conscience, through pain. But I like his word. I like his word comes to life inside of us. This is such a big thought to me today. I want to talk to you about the magic of conversation. Don't quit talking to me. Never, 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 never quit talking to me. I need your voice. My whole world turns around. Grab your spirit. Don't that grab your spirit. Don't quit talking to me. I need your voice. I need your voice. We don't live in a silent world. God doesn't like a silent world. God has a passion for sounds. God has such a need for sound that even dogs bark. Cats meow. Cows moo, horses neigh. God likes sound. And when he went to describe himself, he didn't say, I'm the creator of all the planets. He said, when you think of me, just call me the word, the word, the word. Let me stop for a moment. It's 10 minutes after 12. I have so much in my spirit. Don't quit talking to me. I need your voice. Something just so in me today on this subject. Who's here? Brazil. Canada, Mexico, Nigeria, Uganda, UK. Renee Poole is here. Lynn, so glad you're here all the way in London. Paul Wright. Paul, I hadn't seen you here in a while. Maybe I just didn't see it. Tina, Prophet Joshua. Sounds good to see you here. <laughs> In Goza, Al Ravine, he sure talks to me through you. Don't quit talking to me my whole life. Changes every time I hear you. Al Ravine, greatest mu magician on the earth. Whole world knows that, Al. Mark Mays, Daniel. Daniel, don't you love this song? It's so strong to me. The magic of conversation. Julie, Jesse, Las Vegas, James Lynchy, all the wind, Florida. James, thank you for your support. It means the world to me. Cheryl, Baruch, all the way in Juarez. 
Jen, Jim Mason, I've been staying home since I tasted, tested positive for COVID. <clears throat> Jim, I had COVID. If I can put the picture of the book on the screen, I have a free book about I look, all the scriptures God gave me during my COVID. You want to die when you have COVID. I had it. And, but I'll, God gave me an overcoming. And if anybody wants my free book, it's book 809. And I have a little bit about COVID there, but mainly scriptures. The book is called Protected, if you want a copy of it. Protected. Cindy Jones. Pakistan is here. Pastor Sohail. S-O-H-A-I-L, Ramat, R-E-H-M-A-T, from Pakistan. I attended your meeting at Jesus is Lord Church in New York. Are you serious? Are you serious? That's the last trip I've taken from Pakistan's here. Cindy Jones, I'm already inspired because God lit a fire in you today for this subject. I can't wait to learn it all. Pastor Tim Walker writes one of my favorite keys on conversation. Avoid any conversation that destroys your inspiration. Dr. Mike Murdoch. Pastor Tim, thank you for reminding me of that. Thank you. Well, God gave me a new, God gave me some powerful new ideas and ways to do some things early this morning in prayer. Jesse writes me and said, I've got the book called Protected. It's very good. I, it's the way I kept myself surviving through COVID when I thought I was going to die and wanted to die. Apostle Sonia, yay, you're here today. This book is free. And if you want several copies, there's five books for $20. I'll pay all the shipping and handling. It's 48 pages. Can under free copy, can you put five copies for 20? Boy, God's touched me this morning with a different approach to, to my organizing, my notes and things like that. I'm determined to write a book a day. Don't know how to do it. I speak it but I can't seem to get it into print where you can download it every day. But that's, that's uh, getting well is a big important thing to me right now. But this morning I was not breathing hard like in every morning for the first two or three hours. I'm <sighs> like this for many months. This morning it wasn't like that. Having my problems, but that wasn't one of them breathing hard. So I was thankful for that. Carolyn Carson's here. I'm so glad. Terry Moody. Is that the way you spell your last name, Terry? M-O-O-D-I-E. I haven't seen one that way. Cheryl is here. I can't quit this song. Don't quit talking to me. Never quit talking to me. I need your voice. I need every single word you say. Never quit talking to me. Never quit talking to me. My whole world turns around when you talk to me. I bet Mick Jaggers ends up with this song. Mick Jaggers, the famous rock and roll, put one of my songs on his movie the other day. Don't quit talking to me. Never quit talking. To me. Pastor Tim, I love those wisdom keys you remind me of. Conversations 
can be the seeds for recovery. Stephen Simpson from South Dakota is here. Pastor Tim, I'm, you know where I'm going next with those wisdom keys, don't you? Mm. <laughs> Can't believe it's almost 12:20, and I hadn't got started yet. But that song, remind me to make a video letter. I want all my partners to have this book. I want to talk to you about the magic of conversation. Every man failed in the sin through conversation. Every man who has succeeded, succeeded through conversation. Everybody who became millionaires, became millionaires through conversation. Everybody who's happy, got happy through a conversation. Everybody who failed, failed through conversation. Conversation is the changing season. It's the changing season. Yesterday, several preachers came to see me just to talk to me a little bit. They requested the conversation and I valued it. They were all over 80 years old. I'm 76. I'm gonna move fast here. Sound is a conversation. Thought is not conversation. Conversation can be a Rolls Royce or a broken down motorcycle. Conversations are not the same quality. You have to learn how to talk. Who you're talking to makes a difference in the conversation. The environment of the conversation matters. That's why Esther called for a second dinner with her king husband because the environment wasn't right for the unique and authentic conversation that she had the responsibility of telling her husband he was a jackass fool for signing a bill that all her people would be killed. She is the one that had the responsibility of that, resp that conversation. She also asked for his best friend to join him. Now, if that had been me as king, I said, you and him got something going? What, what Charles deal? You've been having sex with him? What, 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 what's happening here, honey? Esther, talk, talk to me. You want another man, my best friend, to be with us. Well, what's, what's your purpose here? But it's quite a conversation. The magic of conversation is that your feelings can be changed in 60 seconds. Your decision making can be changed in 30 seconds. Conversation contains information, sometimes false. Conversation can contain deception. A missing sentence is serious. A missing chapter in a novel changes everything in that story. Conversation can be a seed. Conversation can become a harvest. Conversation can be directional, meaningful, or without purpose. Let's go back. Let's go back. Conversation with who? An angel created laughter in an old woman named Sarah. The angel said, Abraham, I'm going to give you a child. Abraham says, huh? Huh? Sarah and I hadn't made love in 17 years. What? What? And Sarah starts laughing on the other side of the curtain because she thinks the angel is out of his mind. But the angel was there for one conversation. Get ready for your legacy. I'm going to give you a son. 
Isaac. Wow, we got nine months to prepare. Baby, did you hear that? Go lay down, Sarah. Let's, let's get it going. But it was years. Conversations have timing to them. Who's talking to you? What are they saying? Are they qualified? Are they talking to you when they're depressed and down? They talk to you when they've had a vision. Who's talking to you and who are you listening to? Conversation serious. Conversation, I call this conversational mentorship. Mentorship is learning through the pain of another. Mentorship is learning without the need or lost season of waiting. Mentorship is instant transference of uncommon wisdom. I call this conversation. I love preaching. I like that preaching like Angel Martinez, the famous Baptist evangelist. The first time Jesus came, he came to a cross. This time he's coming back to a coronation. The first time Jesus came, he came to board here. But the next time he's coming back to boss here, the first time Jesus came, he stood before Pilate. But the next time Jesus comes, Pilate's going to stand before him. I love preaching like that. Oh, who doesn't like that? Yeah, yeah. Preach it, brother, preach it. Inspiration is as important as information. That's why motivation speakers get paid 35000 an hour. I've been paid 100000 for one hour. Inspiration is valuable. What's the purpose of that conversation? What's the reason for it? Can you turn a conversation into worthiness most assuredly? Who's going to start the conversation? Who needs the conversation? Who wants it? Who is dismissive of your conversation? Is the conversation accurate? Is it meaningful, purposeful? Is there a hidden agenda in the conversation? Stay with me. Stay with me today. This is important because almost nobody knows how to talk these days. We talk but there's no improvement through the conversation. We speak, but there's no energy and inspiration. I don't want a conversation. It doesn't change my feelings, change my life. I don't want an unprotective conversation. I want a purposeful conversation. I want to talk to you today about that, the value of conversation. Whoever you're talking to is deciding your feelings. Whoever's talking to you is deciding your beliefs. Whoever's talking to you is making you better or more depressed or more discouraged or protective and sensitive. In a swift moment of illustration, six weeks, I woke up at three to seven every morning itching from my ankles to my chest. Horrible. Six weeks. Same time. Three o'clock in the morning, seven in the morning, four hours, approximately, as I remember. Didn't know what was wrong. I cried out to God, got mad at God, angry at God. I said a lot of things to God that he should have killed me over instantly, which I would have welcomed. I wanted to die. I considered two or three ways to commit suicide. Do I go in my pool in the front or I have a pond in the front? Then I could picture my family standing around seeing me float upside down, saying, why did he do that? Why did he do that? Should I go down and jump off of a bridge? Very suicidal for weeks. And didn't know what was wrong. Didn't know exactly what was wrong. When I finally got to a doctor, the doctor looked at the medicine I was taking 
And he looked at his nurse and he says, you got this wrong. I said a half a pill. I didn't say a whole pill. But the nurse, the nurse who didn't hear him right had given me a whole pill. Whole pill. Conversations must be accurate. They must be repeated. They must be understood. And the person talking needs authorization for any instructions given in the con I went crazy then. Had a guy doing chiropractic work on me. And one day he says, because I kept having pain, chest pains real bad. And he says, I looked at your medicines, Dr. Murdoch, and there's four of them that the side effects is uh, chest pain. I suggest you tell your doctor about that, and he needs to take you off. So I went to my oriental primary care physician. Isn't that a powerful phrase? And I sat there, I said, I've been having chest pain. Chiropractor looked at my medicine, said I should be taking off some. You want to look at him? He never said a word. Kept his little oriental smile. Went over there, took me off all four. One of them's not supposed to be taken off for 24 months. You have to wind down. I won't tell you the name of it, I get sued. Horrible medicine. Horrible. A few weeks later, it was on January the 18th, two years ago. Maybe three. I took some of my team to Zimbabwe and South Africa. One afternoon, I'm wanting to jump out of the 10th floor where I was on. I called my staff, my team, with me. I said, come up here. I'm wanting to jump off. I don't know. Something's wrong. I want to jump out the window, which I did, 10 floors. I want to commit suicide. I was in the middle of a meeting, crusades. It was that medicine. He had taken me off suddenly. Conversations are filled with deception, mistakes, inaccuracy. Brother Mike, Brother Mike, I thought you didn't talk about the magic of conversation. I need to. Philip sees the Ethiopian treasurer for the Queen of Ethiopia sitting in his chariot. And Philip, the spirit-filled deacon, initiates conversation. He says to the Ethiopian eunuch, who was reading the book of Isaiah, sitting there, and Philip in the book of Acts says, Understandest thou what thou readest? And the eunuch looks at Philip, and he could have several reactions to the initiated conversation. One was, what's it to you, bozo? I'm the treasure of all of Ethiopia, and you a preacher boy here in Jerusalem? Hey, what makes you think you can talk to me? Who do you think you are asking me questions? Understandest thou what thou readest? But he didn't. He looked at and he says, how can I without a teacher? I need somebody. W would you come up here and talk to me about this? Philip, Philip sowed the seed for mentorship. When he asked a man, are you doing okay with what you're studying? Are you okay? And the man says, how can I without somebody helping me? I can't do anything without help. I can't do a cotton-picking blessed thing. I couldn't even be with you today because I don't know how to work any of this equipment here. Not any of it. I can play a piano. But I can't run the technology. You need somebody. 
And in that one conversation, Philip explained to him who Jesus was and the necessity of being baptized in water. And a few minutes later, the guy said, can we be baptized here? And Philip says, I'll work with you on that right now. Who initiated the conversation? Not the guy who needed it, but the guy who cared. I never, never, never wait for somebody to initiate a conversation. Why? My entire life I've had people look at me like this. Or like this. No, I don't ever wait for conversation. I initiate it. I start it. What if they don't want to talk? They don't have to. I'd have, I have a need to. I want to. Conversations can be magical, glorious. And you can change a bad conversation to good. You can turn a sad conversation towards something inspirational. You're going to love my new book called Drops of Hope. You're going to love it. A single sentence can correct your focus. Remember the prophet who had his assistant next to him? And the assistant looked out and says, we're, we're surrounded by soldiers. Did you see the swords? Did you see the spears? And the prophet says, Holy Spirit, show him the engines, angels that surround us. He can see the enemies, but he can't see the angels. Would you open his eyes so he could see all the angels that surround us? And in one conversation, corrected the focus and transformed the imagination of his assistant. What's the opportunity of that conversation? What's the purpose of it? Who's the listener in the conversation? Who's the teacher of the conversation? Who's the one that's up? Which one is, which one is down? What's the focus of people in the conversation? I was sharing this morning with one of my people that had brought me something to view, a letter that I'm writing to you. And as she talked, I says, I want to show you how many people have written me this morning on Viber, preachers, different countries, people that I know. One of the advantages of living a long time is you get a lot of friendship. One of the disadvantages of living a long time is your response system better be up to par to be able to respond to everybody. And I says, I want to show you somebody that thinks I'm the only person they talk to on Vibers. They think I'm the only person that they talk to, but they have no idea that I've dealt with 17 people this morning that I had to deal with, and their Viber was one out of 17. So when you get in a conversation, let's think of the advice of Dima Shakarian, the great multimillionaire of the full gospel businessman, who said continuously to his son Richard, don't talk to somebody until they're ready to receive it. Don't talk to somebody until they're ready to receive what you're saying. Zacchaeus. What? A little short guy that was as crooked as a snake, as most people in the tax ministry is. He's up in the tree because he's so short, he can't see anything, but he wanted to see Jesus. He crawls up in the tree. Did Zacchaeus, did Zacchaeus scream out, Jesus, 
thou son of David. No. Jesus says, come down, I'd like to go to your house. Let's talk a little bit. Jesus initiated the conversation. Two or three hours later, Zacchaeus is a new man. He says, I've done some people very wrong, and I want to change it and pay them all back four times what I took from their taxes. Can you imagine? Can you imagine the power of Jesus talking? To make a tax man give back anything? Woo! If you can make a tax man honest, you have to be God. You have to be God. What's the proof that Jesus was God? He made a tax man give back some money. You don't have to prove anything else. See, that's enough. Conversation can turn a crooked man straight. One conversation can make a crooked man straight. A conversation can remove fear. A conversation can birth self-confidence, such self-confidence that Ruth shows up and knocks on the bedroom door of Boaz, the wealthiest man in the area, and she's sitting on the end of his bed and says, Hey, man. The boy said, Ruth, 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 what, what are you doing here in my bedroom? She says, Naomi talked to me and told me it's time for me to get married and you're the nearest kinsman. Let's talk, Buster. She taps her hand and says, it's ring time. And he says, I'm so sorry, but I got to tell you, you're not. No, this has been some misinformation. But Ruth had all the courage in the world by hanging around her mother-in-law, Naomi. That's what conversation can do. Conversations are revealing. Conversations are revealing. Conversations are healing. Conversation can be transformative. A conversation can keep you from getting killed. Jesus says, hey guys, those are big stones y'all got. Yes, master, we're fixing to kill this woman. We caught her on top of her man in bed. And he wasn't her husband. She committed adultery and we caught her in the act. Now, Jesus could have said several things. What was y'all doing in our bedroom? Maybe they were lined up. They all wanted a little freebie. What were y'all what y'all doing in her bedroom, huh? What you guys doing looking at her? Jesus could have said, yeah, and how long did you watch her before you decide to stone her? 30 minutes, 45 minutes. Well, what, what happened? She wouldn't take you on? What was she turned you down? What, what's, what's got you upset, guys? But Jesus, in one conversation, said, anybody here who's, who's uh, never sinned, y'all be, that, you, you be the first one that throws a stone. If you've never made a mistake, you throw the stone. That's what a conversation can do. And Jesus stopped the stoning of a woman with one conversation. The magic of conversation. A conversation can be deadly, like Potiphar's wife telling everybody, a rejected woman is the most dangerous experience on the earth. That's a wisdom key, Mike Murdoch. A rejected woman is the most dangerous experience on the earth. And she said, this Hebrew, because he had said, hey, 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 woman, you don't belong to me. Your husband gave me the money, but he didn't give me you. Back away, back away. And she screams out, he's trying to rape me. 
And like most people believe a woman, when it comes to a man and a woman, they always believe the woman. 98 times out of 100, they believe the woman. Nobody can believe that a woman lies. <laughs> That's how you test IQ, I guess. And what did Joseph do? Her conversation put him in prison. But he had a conversation with the butler and the baker that got him out of prison. One of the things that came to me so strong this morning that somebody watching me today was going through false accusations. I want to say to you, stay steady. Don't announce the false accusation. Don't tell everybody what it was because they'll halfway believe the false accusation. Be very quiet about it. Be silent about it. But stay kind. Stay gracious. Stay in integrity. And God's going to give you a conversation that'll get you out. Somebody's conversation can put you in bad place, but your conversation can catapult you to the right place. Very strong this morning while I was praying. Don't know who, I just felt that. I felt that somebody watching me today had really been treated wrong through a false accusation. God's going to get you out somehow. I was praying for a young man this morning that's Heavy on my heart today. He dated a girl through a dating service that says you had to be 18 years old to be on the service. It turns out she was not 18. She was very much underage. He dated her, had sex with her, and they put him in prison. He was there over one year, and I spent a lot of money to get him out. I'm paying his, his lawyers now, paying for his doctor, paying. And this morning, he's been on my heart. He's as good as gold. He knows more scriptures than most Christians. The kid loves God. He's like 23 years old. He loves God with all of his heart. His mother is a fabulous Christian woman in another country. He wears irons around his ankle. He couldn't sleep all night last night because of the pain. He's had those irons on him about a year and a half. They won't take them off. I've asked. I'll pay a fine. I'll pay money. Take the irons off of his ankle. He couldn't sleep all night last night. And this morning, it's so strong in me the injustice they do. I don't know if anybody in the legal industry is honest. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. There are bound to be somebody. But I know there's crooked judges and there's crooked lawyers and there's crooked prosecutors. They're trying to put a 23-year-old Christian boy who was in Bible college, they're trying to put him in jail for 45 years for having sex with a young girl. You don't think that... You don't think... That, how do you think that affects me? And so this morning, I was asking God for the word path to get him out. He's out of prison. I provide a place for him to sleep every night. He's got a heart of gold, loves God's presence. But he's been done as... He's being done dirtier than Joseph. Didn't think anybody ever be like that, would you? But I asked the Lord this day, Father, what are the conversations needed to get him out of this place? And that's the path I want to say today. If you talk to the right person, everything changes. If you speak the right words, everything changes. One conversation can be an exit out of the prison. One. The butler grabs his head after two years in Pharaoh's hall. He said, oh, sir, I just remembered there's a man in prison who's gifted at 
telling the meaning of dreams. And the Pharaoh said, call him here. And Joseph stands before the Pharaoh of all of Egypt and in one conversation gets out of jail and becomes the second in the ruler of all of Egypt. And every man and woman in Egypt had to answer to him because of one conversation. Conversations are investments. They're seeds. They contain harvest. Esther, in one conversation, stopped Haman's covenant to kill all the Jews. Delilah, in one conversation, stripped Samson of all of his anointing. One conversation. Jesus, in one conversation, transformed a, man, a woman's life who had five husbands to the Samaritan well. One conversation. A friend of mine called me a few days ago. He made, I think it was 46 or 47% interest on all of his money last year because he had one conversation with a genius man in investment. One conversation. I think it was 47% interest he earned on all of his money from the last 12 months. One conversation. A friend of mine yesterday told me about a certain kind of situation called stem cell, stem cells, S-T-E-M-C-E-L-L-S. Mel Gibson had a special procedure done that transformed all of his health. Stem cell research. And as he was telling me yesterday, he said, it transformed my health. I'm not even the same man. A conversation can birth healing, restoration. Faith, self-confidence, one conversation. But you've got to see conversation as your number one investment of your life. Train your children through videos. Train your staff through videos. A conversation can change seasons in less than two minutes, two minutes, change seasons of your life. You need to hear this over and over again today. You need to hear this over and over again today. I'm going to make this hour teaching free on the front of my website. It's called The Magic of Conversation, part one. Uganda's here, UK. Korea's here, Brazil, Canada, Ghana, Jamaica's here, Kenya, Mexico, Nigeria, Pakistan, South Korea is here. Prophet Joshua says, Dad, you have a new anointing of health and wisdom on you. Love your presence. Dad, you are a healer. I love those words, Prophet Joshua. I love those words. Yvonne. Daddy, we celebrate you always. S Stephen Simpson from South Dakota. Jackie Pate, Frank Champion, Mark Mays. Quote, the legal system has become very political and not about justice. Current stem cell technology is amazing. 
I'm hoping to do it. It's in another country, but I want to do it. Louisa Hansen. Louisa, thank you for noticing that. Apostle Sonia said, I have book one conversation. It has revolutionized my life. What an incredible book. Daniel, good question. James Lynchy. Started sowing in my personal life. Write James down. He's been sowing to me personally. That's very powerful to me. David Trujillo said, who can ever have conversations the same after hearing this wealthy teaching? Oh, wow. Wow. Father, I praise you. Father, I praise you. Father, I praise you. Father, I praise you. Eight. Eight. Eight is the number of new beginnings. Eight is the number of new beginnings. Eight is the number of new beginnings. I'm going to ask everybody that can today. In eight days, let's ask God for a new beginning. In eight days, let's ask God for a new beginning. Whatever seed that you sow, whatever seed that you plant, Make your harvest. I want a new beginning in eight days. In eight days. Holy Spirit, thank you for putting this in my heart today. Lord, I love this new song, Don't Quit Talking to Me. I love this song. And Father, I praise you today for the seeds of your people to help me stay on television, stay on the radio, help me feed the staff, bless the staff, Help me pay for our offices. Thank you, in Jesus' name. Amen. Two years, it takes us two hours to put my teaching live. Today's, what's the seventh or eighth? Eighth? Today is June the eighth. Wow. It didn't hit me, but I just know the number eight's big to me today. The number eight is very big in my spirit today. Today is June the 8th. The time is five minutes until one. Is it Wednesday? Wednesday. Today is June the 8th, Wednesday. And in two hours, I'll have everything I spoke for one hour on the front page of the website today. We're redoing our website. It needs a lot of help, and we're redoing it. Thank you today for this. One of the best books I ever put together was 150 of the greatest thoughts God had ever given me. It's book 169. It's called The Wisdom Notes of Mike Murdoch. It's my gift today to any seed that you plant in our ministry. There's three phone numbers on the front page here. The pray number, 817 838 pray. If you'll write those telephone numbers down. 817-759-BOOK. And the third number, 844-789-SEED. My mailing address is Box 1669, Colleyville, Texas. The book is free, protected. Book 809, five copies are $20. But my gift book of the day is the Wisdom Notes of Mike Murdoch. It's hardback. We'll never repeat this hardback edition ever. We're going to downloads. I hope by January 1st to be completely moved to downloads so the paperback books, these books will not be available probably in another year or so. So this is my gift of the day. The Wisdom Notes of Mike Murdoch. 
Apostle Sonia just mentioned my book on conversations. It's not edited, but it's absolutely powerful. I'll talk to you about it at the five o'clock time. This is part one, the magic of conversation. Conversation decides who you marry. Conversation can stop pain. Conversation can make you a millionaire. Everything that you're wanting is hidden in the right conversation. Very, very strong. Sherry, thank you so much for those words. My niece, Elise, is here. Yay. Miss Marty Martinez. Isn't this a powerful? Dr. Brown says this has been such a rich wisdom teaching. The Lord willing, I'll be back at 5 o'clock. Today is June the 8th. There's, I want to show you ways to sow into our ministry and then also ways if you want to sow a gift of honor to my personal life. Take a pen and write this information down. Jacques says, I love the title, Dr. Murdoch, of your new book, Drops of Hope. Jacques, I have to hear right words to overcome a lot of things that happen in my life. I have to hear drops of hope. And I have to hear those words. And thank God I've got a staff who continuously speaks to me right words. I'm glad you love the, my new book title. It'll be out in a few days. I'll tell you when. Jacques, thank you for responding to that. Miss Viviana, I felt such a stirring today that God would complete his healing of the lawyer who's been such a blessing to my whole ministry for so many years. Viviana Cavada is with us today. Julie says, I love the name Drops of Hope. I can't wait to read your new books. It's my new book coming out, and I think it'll be a blessing. These are ways to sow into our ministry. Joanna Bufkin, thank you. That's a great, great compliment, Joanna. More than I could possibly say. Wow. The miracle conversation. The encouragement conversation. The inspiration conversation. The protection conversation. I'm going to continue part two at five o'clock in a conversation with you. I love that, Lynn. Oceans of hope are coming towards you. I love that. Zeal heals. Isn't that precious? Powerful. Now we'll show you how to sow. And James, that personal seed to my personal life made me do a lot of thinking. And you have no idea, no idea what it means that you would take the time to bless me personally. You have no idea. I want to pray for the harvest of those that are showing honor to the kingdom of God today. Father, I ask you for five harvests. Number one, restoration of health promised in Isaiah 58. Number two, I ask you for financial wisdom and financial favor according to Psalms 112th chapter, verses 1 and 3. I ask you for the hundredfold return promised in Mark chapter 10, 28 through 30. I ask you that every generous seed would create a swift and huge harvest, according to 2 Corinthians 9, verse 6. And I ask you, Father, to turn everything in our favor. Take every piece of sorrow and turn it, according to Romans 8, verse 28. Something wonderful is close to me. Something 
glorious I soon will see Turn my life around Turn my life around Something glorious has been promised to me Something glorious, something glorious, something wonderful is coming close to me. Robert Walden, Jacques, Daniel. This is for you. Leanne. Leanne Smiles is with us today. I'm so thankful. God bless you, family. We're going to run a little video here. We're going to run a little video. Stay here. And the Lord willing, I'll be back with you live right here from my offices in Colleyville at 5 o'clock today. Take the time. It's worth it. Don't forget book 169, The Wisdom Notes of Mike Murdoch. 150 of the greatest thoughts God ever put in me. I love this book very, very much. And it's my gift today, thanking you for any seed God has led you to plant in the kingdom of God. Stay here. Video will be on, and it's worth watching. Offer 527, I call this the Prosperity Five. Here they are. 31 Secrets to Career Success. It's book 44. Recognize and follow the path of favor. Favor is the golden river from the pit to the palace. There are 20 facts in this book. 20 facts in this book you should know about favor alone. 20 facts. Eight facts about organizing your day and organizing your life in your home. 47 facts about right words, how to talk to other people. 47 facts. This book is a gold mine. It's an encyclopedia. I talk to you. Never make an important decision when you're tired. Jeff Bezos of Amazon won't make a decision about his business after three o'clock. Dwight Eisenhower would never make a decision for the government after three o'clock. I give you 10 facts about fatigue and how it affects your decision. Negotiate everything. Negotiation is getting what you want by helping other people get what they need. I'm, this is one of the Prosperity Five books I'm sending to every person who sows a $58 seed. Secrets of the Richest Man Who Ever Lived. 19 years in writing this book. Book 99 on the 31 Master Secrets of Solomon. It took me 19 years to write that. The book that Billy, that Benny Hinn asked me to write for all of his partners. 31 Reasons People Do Not Receive Their Financial Harvest, Book 82. This book alone normally costs $15. The Law of Recognition, out of over a thousand books I've written, this is my favorite book, Book 114, The Law of Recognition. In Brazil, a man met me at the airport, holding this book in his hand. When I got off the plane, he says, this book made me a multi-millionaire. If prosperity matters to you, don't live life without the law of recognition. It's book 114. The fifth book I want you to have, it's my celebration of the $58 seed, 31 days to your money world. The place, these are all my money thoughts, not all of them, but major money thoughts. The place you create pleasure is the place your money world begins. 
Money is what you receive when you help someone else achieve their goal. Money makes God talk about you, makes God talk for you, and makes God talk to you. The more important people are to you, the more important money will become. Money is a divine reward for solving a problem. Instructions are doors to money. Money is a reaction, not a miracle. Money grows wherever you've decided to plant on it. If your money created a good memory for someone today, you succeeded again. There's no book like this on the earth. It's book 808, 31 days to your money world. I'm sending you all five books. And if you don't think wealth is worth the $58 seed to the missions and pay for the work of God, don't worry about it. The right people will. Father, I sanctify these five books. Call them Prosperity Five. I ask you for 58 people in the next 72 hours to call the seed number. I ask you for 58 who will sow a $58 seed for 90 days each month and document what will happen. Amen. I need, I need your phone number if you're going to sow a $58 seed for three months because I'd like to talk to you directly in the next 90 days. I won't call, hold you long. I won't talk more than maybe three to five minutes. But I want to have a direct prayer with you about your $58 covenant. I don't call everybody. I don't call many people. But there's something about these 58 people. There's 58 people joining me for the next three months. $58 C each month. For three months. 